Hi YouTube. Today's rant. The turtle. Not the animal. Not master of disguise. Turtle, turtle, turtle. I'm too turtly for the turtle club. <laughs> oh, the turtle. When I was in second grade and my teacher was in her first year of teaching fresh out of college. I have no idea where she came up with this method, but it was fabulous. Instead of having a timeout chair, she had a reflection chair behind her teacher's desk against a wall. And she had this poster on the wall that said, Welcome to the Turtle Chair. She renamed it the timeout, the turtle. Basically, it was a reflection chair. Hold on, let me. Inside the turtle shell is a big collection of feelings and emotions. And sometimes kids go through their days without any emotions turned on. So they end up saying and doing the wrong things, misbehaving, even though in the long run they know better. But they need to get into the habit. They're still worrying at six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old that actions have consequences or causes have effects. And they're still learning to get their minds into the think before doing, speak before saying habit. It takes a long time and it doesn't click immediately the first, second, or third time when they're four or five or six. At that point, they're still working on impulse control. And then by the time they're in second grade or third grade, say the middle of elementary school, their habits are beginning to form for the rest of their lives, especially in social situations and settings. To reflect in your turtle shell about what you said and did or what you could have done differently and to turn on your emotions to keep them active for the rest of the day to think before doing and speaking an ideal setting would be to have a comfy chair that looks different from all the rest of the chairs in the classroom either away from all social interaction areas of the classroom or behind the teacher's desk. I'm not saying put your nose in the corner, but it's not a place where you sit down and hang out with your friends and socialize. It's a place for you to reflect. And I remember she had a big poster on the wall. I think it was the handwritten kind. Maybe it was laminated. But it had step-by-step -step bullet points, basically, of how to reflect in the turtle chair. And sometimes situations required a written apology and a verbal apology. And sometimes even a practiced apology with the teacher and like a stuffed animal or an action figure that she had. And then you give the real apology to the person you harmed, you hurt, you stole their items, you took their items, you took something and borrowed something without asking or without giving it back, if you said something wrong, if you misbehaved the wrong way, etc, etc. Okay, the four minute mark. I'm going to finish this by five minutes. If I don't, you can sue me. I don't care. <laughs> okay, don't sue me. Don't sue me. Seriously. Um, yeah, that was the turtle chair, and that was basically the best solution I've ever seen in my whole lifetime as to how to do, like, a reflection chair or a timeout socially, but to think about why you ended up there and what you could have done differently and what you will do differently from now on. That's a good, good way to use a turtle, a turtle's shell, as a place where you put all your emotions and all your feelings. And sometimes kids wake up on the wrong side of the bed and they go to school 
without their turtle shell on their back. And so they end up forgetting about empathy and respect. And they have to go to the turtle chair to turn on those feelings again and to recollect themselves. It makes sense. I ended up in the turtle chair a lot. Okay, yeah, past five minute mark, whatever. <sighs> I ended up in the turtle chair a lot. And so did a lot of other kids too. I remember second grade was like one of those school years where the military base had nonstop people going in and out, in and out, in and out. And so we got a lot of kids who only stayed for two or three months at a time during that school year. And, you know, they weren't all there for picture day in September. So they weren't all in this in our yearbook or class photo. But I remember there were kids who would just stay for two or three months or a month and then they'd be gone and you never heard from them again. I think one time there was a kid who was there for sec for first grade, came back in fourth grade, and then there was a kid we had in kindergarten or in first grade and then came back in fifth grade, but ended up being dropped a grade below us, probably because of the parents' choices on how many times their kid had to move schools or something and missed out too much and was behind, whatever. My point is, the turtle, a reflection chair with an age-appropriate metaphor of where you put your feelings and your behaviors and how you use them. That's appropriate for the age of the child who is going to be using that reflection corner. But when they're older, say like middle school, you got to use something else besides the turtle shell. I think it will work for some kids, but then you have a different reflection chair routine step-by-step -step chart for the other kids. Okay, seven minute mark. <laughs> Cranky, silly me. All right, that's it, folks. That's all I have. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk about reflection chairs, timeout chairs, and an alternative solution without violence, without intimidation, and without frightening anyone. Adios.